Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms, Danny at Trey. Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We have <laughs> Westside legend, special guest in the building, Luke Edwards. What's up, my brother? What's up, buddy? Man, this guy doesn't talk to nobody. <laughs> like, this is epic. For you guys that follow powerlifting, I've been a fan of Westside and, and his crew in particular – Sponsored these guys back in the day. Yeah. Uh, all of us here have competed in powerlifting are inspired by what Westside built to have Luke out here, which I know you're going to start doing more of this yeah. stuff, and, yeah. you, and you need to. And this motherfucker's on the cover of Westside versus World. He's the cover model. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, Luke. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Luke, give us a little background. Like, <clears throat> when did you start lifting weights or powerlifting? Like, there's a ton of stuff we can talk about yeah. once you got to West yeah. Side, but like, give us a little bit of background on yourself, where yeah. you grew up, and, yeah. and to that point, and then we'll rock. Um, so I was uh, born in a small town, um, and when I was about 12 years old, well, let me scoop, go back even further. Yeah, sure. Uh, when I was a young kid, my uh, grandfather was in the lifting weights. All right. And he had two step kids, and one was a bodybuilder, and one was a like a, a state. Uh, record holder down in Florida for the squat. Okay. <clears throat> and so, Fuck like, yeah. he had, like, all the, like, flex magazines, muscle mags, stuff like that. Hell yeah. And uh, so I was always wanting to look like like a bodybuilder, you know. And so, like, when I was 12 years old, you had to be uh, 16 at the YMCA to um, – you had to wear a wristband to get yeah. into the YMCA. And so I found one in the trash or whatever and put it on my shoe. And the guy who was, like, the manager there, he had to have known that, like, I was only 12 years old. Yeah. But, like, I took it serious, <laughs> you know. Like, uh, like I you was, just acted like you're supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I was a gym rat. Like, I was yeah. there, like, five hours every day, you know, just, like. At do 12. It at 12, yeah. And then, what? like, I, I would have, awesome. we'd have two days of football, and then I'd go in the gym, and guys are like, didn't you have practice today? I was like, yeah. He's like, you need to stay out of the weight room. Like, Sounds nah, like fucking I, cam. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still had to get it in, you know. Um, so, anyways, uh, during, in high school, I did, like, a, a powerlifting meet. And at 14, I pulled 400. So I f was destined to be like a, yeah. a pretty decent deadlifter, you know. Um, and so then fast forward a little bit, uh, you know, I'm at the YMCA uh, training, and then I do a bodybuilding show uh, as a teen, and I do like teen nationals. And then um, I help um, one of my buddies do a show, and like he got totally fucked out of like winning the overall mm -hmm. like he should have. He didn't know the judges, and I, you know, sure. bodybuilding is real subjective. Oh, yeah. And so <clears throat> I was like, man, I'm going to try go to powerlifting. I think I'm pretty, I was pretty strong, like bodybuilder anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm going to switch over to powerlifting. And so like, I bought all the West Side DVDs. Fuck yeah. And, the and original started, things. Yeah. It's so yeah. good. Well, like back in the day, this is no, no lie. I could do uh, 455 for like three sets of six to eight on the incline press. Holy and, like, shit. Yeah. What? Yeah, man. Like I was, I was, I was like 300 plus 350. Oh, you're a big motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was huge. Damn. Yeah. And I, ba I bounced what? in a strip club, so I was kind of mean to it. I could take my aggression out on, on whoever was backing <laughs> up. And, and, you uh, were definitely destined for West Side, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so this was in high school? Yeah, yeah. In high school? Right out. No, no, no. Oh, right this, out? Right this out? Is, this, yeah, this is right out. Yeah, Dang. yeah. I was probably like 22, something like that. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Wait, can you repeat yeah. the incline section? Yeah, yeah incline. Yeah, yeah. 455 we, we, incline. You blazed right over that. <laughs> okay. 455 for three sets of six to eight. Yeah. And then on one of those workouts, I went over and I flat pressed 550. Damn. <laughs> like it was nothing. And I didn't think, like, if I knew a 600-pound bench, like, was something, like, yeah. and this was raw, you know, like, yeah, I would have. Yeah. And back then, the, that was, like, top, top, top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, like, I didn't know at the time. The thing that sucked about Westside is as my shirted bench got better, my raw bench yeah. went down mm. a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. And then also I had some car wrecks, and I'll get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what kind of fucked up my bench too. But um, anyways, uh, so I uh, I um, do the YMCA, bodybuilding. Then I, I go, oh, I switch to powerlifting. And um, <clears throat> because I used to be a wrestler, you know, and, like, okay. I, I figure powerlifting is kind of like wrestling, you know, oh, like yeah. – like there's a little bit of politics, but like either at the end of the day, you either get the weight or you don't. So that's Facts. what got me into yeah. powerlifting. Mm -hmm. you know? That's why yeah. we all like it too. You either, you're either fucking strong or you're not. Right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. <clears throat> so were you at, at this time, like, were you like training like with like two buddies or like what was the environment you were training at then? Well, I started out by myself um, and I watched the videos and I was just training like myself all the way up. And then um, one, through one of my buddies, I met Gabe Daniels, who used to kind of travel to Westside. Okay. Uh, he was almost like a pro strongman, and like his uh, 
he had like the he built my grip. He had the like uh, have you ever seen the crushers of grip? The yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, he could close number four. And back then, like only twenty five people could back then. Like that's You're like that's motherfucker, yeah. twenty five motherfuckers can close yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want some shit like that. Yeah, man. He, <laughs> Were you guys training at like a was it like a hardcore gym or commercial oh, gym? Or oh, what? it was it called the dungeon. It was his oh, house, yeah. and <laughs> it was down in this down in his basement. Yeah. And yeah. we would do all the like powerlifting stuff, and then we go out and do strongman stuff. And like that's what built that my grip sense. doing all the farmers yeah. walks, and that was like the only time I ever thought like God, please take me. I like I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> after, it's hard. I, yeah, I did. After like my fifth set of farmers walk, we were going down thirty yards, turn around, come back. Yeah. And I remember setting them down. And I laid down. I was like, Oh God, please just take me right now. <laughs> like, yeah. I, and, but then I got up and did another set. You know, yeah. I, afterwards. But what town was this in? Where'd you grow up at? This Luke? was uh, well. I grew up in Van Wert, Ohio, okay, and then yeah. I, I moved to Fort Wayne, Indiana, mm-hmm. and lived there for uh, about nine years or so. And then um, I was powerlifting for probably about a year um, when Louis invited me to, to Westside. So then I saved up some money, didn't have a job lined up, nothing, sure. and then came uh, to Westside and uh, and then finally you know got a job and whatever. Sure. But yeah, man. Uh, Talk about your first day at Westside. Because my first that, day? That's like one of those things that – you know, everyone wants to know because yeah. you obviously you're already a fan. You're doing yeah. the techniques. You're strong enough to be there. Yeah. Obviously, we wouldn't invite you. But then, what's that like first interaction like? Man, it's almost like a outer body experience. <laughs> yeah, you know? like that's why I figured, <laughs> man. Like it was like this is the mecca. Like you're at yeah. the. Um, I w- I had visited there a couple times, mm-hmm. um, and that you know that was like it was yeah. like 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 a, you know seeing Chuck Vogelbo for the first time. It's like seeing closest. MJ. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's like holy cow, man, this is just in- insane. Um, but then when Louis invited me, my first day there, I remember the workout was just like I couldn't get enough of it. You know, mm-hmm. like it just you just I don't know it's you're just drawn to this, and it's just like Louis has this aura. Like I feel like special people always have aura on mm-hmm. them. You know, like you definitely do. and and he just you know he was just a tough motherfucker, man. And you just know the thing that I I loved about instantly when you walk in there you have to put your best foot forward yes. you fucking know it yes. every it wasn't yeah. matter even it if the expected. guys were half yeah. retired on sunday yeah. it didn't fucking matter and i think that that's what i wanted to try to build with our crew in the morning is that when you come here that it's the competition and once we went private it changed even more because yeah. i was afraid to get guys hurt because yeah. we just have random people jumping right. in they can't fucking handle 400 pounds of bands and right. shit and it's like i wanted people to walk in and feel uncomfortable yeah like you and this is what I love about West Side. You walk in, no one fucking talks to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like right, like remember that you walk in and you're like, Fuck don't yeah. know where to go. You don't know if you go sit in the side room. You know, like but that, but that's part of it though. Well, <laughs> we were all training partners and we didn't talk to each other. Yeah, exactly. Beginning. Not not one word <laughs> yeah. until the end of the workouts. Like we'd go in, we hated each other, and then because you're about to compete. Yes. Yeah. And so people don't really, and that's so lost nowadays, yes. right? So like that shit right there is what. I loved about that fucking environment. And even though I wasn't near as strong and didn't have, but I just, I fucking was so drawn to that feeling that I knew that if I came there, I was absolutely going to do stuff I would never try, probably with my normal crew or on my own. Right. It's impossible. Right. Or like fucking, I'm getting ready to take, I think even 600 for the first time on a back yeah. squat. Bob Coe looks at me like, you're a fucking West Side motherfucker. And I'm thinking like, I'll fucking die under this weight right now. I don't get, like, you know what I mean? Like, Amy just beat me, so I better yeah. fucking do something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but that's the thing, like, People fucking miss that, bro. Yeah, yeah. I fucking love it. Why don't, yeah. we zo- why don't we zoom in on the competitive part? Like, have sure. you always been, like, super, like, hyper-competitive like that? Well, here's the thing is I don't like to win, but I hate to lose. Yeah. Like, I hate to fucking lose. And at Westside, it humbles you quick because, you know, you lose quite often. <laughs> yeah. And I fucking hated it, man. Yeah. And But, it, it you know, it, it helped me prepare me for life for losing, you know, at other things, losing different battles. And then, But then the contests were easy. Like, we'd go win all the contests because we were yeah. battling every the day. Shit's in the shit's harder yeah. in the gym. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Our Wednesdays here, which is our main back squat day, yeah. is way more intense and competitive than anything we face. Yeah. It just is. Yeah. Like, we have to bring the hype at the meet because it's so much more low-key yeah. that it feels fucking weird. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's the one thing. Like, our guys can't wait to get under the bar. Because they've been fucking, you know, plus we squat like five times a week. Yeah. With four front squats, one wow. back squat. So the guys are under the bar all the time. Yeah. You know, and with the conjugate, the way I do the variations, like, it limits how heavy they can go on certain days or whatever. Yeah. But the reality is, like, we got so comfortable for that first lift, which is a lot of where guys are fucking, you know, all yeah. over the place that it, it changed the way that when we go to meets, like, guys can't fucking wait to get back there and go. And so it's like that 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 definitely gives us a leg up yeah. for sure. It's, it's great to find people that are hungry. 
Oh yeah, that want to that want to learn, that want to fucking get strong. That's that's great. Well, we have guys, and obviously after we did this, I'm gonna invite you to come in because the guys would love to have you come just eyeball some stuff, and that's what like I said, Joe and Tony have done, and the guys are all trying to learn, and that's the thing with me. Like I'm obviously like training partner and helping coach, but I've done seen what you guys can do. Like why not have a guy that's been doing it this long, five pro totals, come in and give you a couple (laughs) tips? It could make such a big difference. I'm not like. Not like I'm always trying to. I've had Tony coming in for years yeah. and Anthony helping. It just yeah. helps our guys. And oh, yeah. when when guys of your nature can see what we're trying to build, then to me it's like I can. I, you come on a Monday. Like Joe came on a Monday when we pull because that's like the day. It's probably the most similar to the West Side day. Yeah. And he came out and he's like, he's like, yo, that was loud, crazy, intense. Like I fucking <laughs> like that. You know, he he works early so he can't come yeah. all the time, but. Yeah. It was like, you know, you get some love from a guy like that, and you're like, oh, we're building something good here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. real cool. Uh, Danny, Trey, you got something? Want to go? I, I was going to say, like, um, as far as, like, some of the battles, that, like, and people who you are battling with on a day-to-day basis, I want you to, like, kind of dig into that. Is there, like, yeah. a specific instance or time that, that sticks out to you? Yeah, like, I mean, about probably the three years, four years that I trained with Greg Benor. I was just going to say, I knew I it had hate, to be Greg. I hated that motherfucker. <laughs> He's I so it. strong. I hate it. Yeah, he used to piss me off, man. <laughs> Like, he would be telling a joke. Like, for me, I had to be turned on the whole time. Like, mm. you know, he could be telling a joke up to the squat rack and then just fucking turn that switch and just fucking he's squat a, whatever. He's a gifted he, bad he motherfucker, freak, bro. freak, man. Fucking yeah. freak. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, like, that used to just piss me off because he would beat me every day in the gym. And he got so used to it that the time that I beat him in the deadlift – it like it shocked him because it was like the first time he had ever lost ever, <laughs> and, and it, I mean he ended up taking that weight. Uh, we ended up pulling reverse band and it was like 860, and I pulled it raw. I pulled it the first time, and then uh, Greg missed it. I mean he pulled it, tried it raw. He tried it with straps. He tried it with suit straps. Yeah. I mean he tried it like 30 times, and <laughs> he couldn't get it. it. Just kept getting worse and worse. <laughs> and, yeah, I think finally I got him that one time, and yeah. like it really it pissed him off. I remember Louis saying that he was <laughs> definitely one of the most talented uh, guys that had come through there. Oh that, my gosh. Obviously, he came through and he ran through a lot of yeah. Chuck's records. And I mean, shit. what people don't realize is like Ed Cohen had the record forever at 242. Yep. It was like 2480, something like that. Yeah. I mean, Greg was told on 2600 at you know under 250 pounds before guys were even touching 25. He I mean, just no, fucking blew you, through just it. Just blew right through it, man. Jesus Christ. You know, and he did that like within like three meets at Westside. You know, I mean, he just <laughs> is <stupid>. crazy, <laughs> man. Crazy strong. <laughs> and he had he was good at all three. You know, yeah, he was that, a good that's squatter, the thing. Good he wasn't venture. like there wasn't one that overkilled. He, yeah, he was just saw yeah, he was solid at all. Yeah. Of them. And speaking of that, so when I first came to Columbus, um, I competed mm-hmm. and. Uh, I, I pulled and got on the board, and, like, that's unheard of, you know, because I got on the board in six weeks, and the, oh, wow. that record had been on there for 12 years. Chuck had had it at 242. What'd you pull? Uh, 810, 242. To take Chuck Vogelpool to off take the Chuck fucking Vogelpool. board. To take Chuck off the what? board. What? <laughs> so, yeah. So I uh, – <laughs> I'm, I'm coming home from work and a car t-bones me and i smash into another car mm. and uh i end up get, having to get a new car you know this dude sued this dude whatever they said out of court well 10 days later uh no five days later um i have my new car and my ex runs out of gas on the highway and it's when they were real icy roads you know mm-hmm. and so a car was fishtailing driving like 50 miles an hour and slamming on the brakes so i'm on the highway putting gas in the car and the last thing i'd say to her is wouldn't it be funny if i got hit by a car or something like that Boom! Car goes right on me, what? and I get plan. I get pinned between two cars, oh and I thought my leg was gone. You know, I ended up squatting that next week because it was the Arnold, and like everybody was in town. My legs were like su- super black. I end up. Yeah. Holy what? Shit. The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> next, yeah. next week. Yeah, the next week. Yeah, <laughs> I could barely on. walk. That you got day. hit by a car. And then squatted in the Arnold the next week. Yeah. Well, this, yeah, well, the Arnold was in town. The guys yeah, were in yeah, town. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, at, at West Side. Yeah. What the yeah. fuck was the diagnosis there? <laughs> like, well, yeah. He's like, don't like, be a pussy. Did you go to the hospital? <laughs> yeah, and they, <laughs> kept, they, they, they kept thinking, like, well, they took me back to the spot that night, and, like, there's like they're like, yeah, when we turn our lights on, uh, that's when cars you smashing us. So I just got smashed at the spot. They turn the lights on. I have to go get my car. I'm like freaking out. I just got you know yeah. just got smashed here. I can barely walk. They put me back in the cage. I can't even like sit in the thing. And uh, yeah, I end up getting like a slight tear in my knee. And then I end up tearing my oblique. So I'll mm-hmm. tell you, this was like three weeks later. I was doing like uh, 
weird lateral raises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like this pop. I didn't think nothing of it. I go take a nap, and, like, all of a sudden, it feels like somebody's stabbing me. I'm like, what is going on? So, like, my whole, like, side just got black because, um, you know, it's tore. So I ended up competing, uh, like, three weeks later. I put a little bit of duct tape on it, and I, I ended up squat. It took me three times, but I squatted 900. I bench- <laughs> <laughs> Look at Cole's face. This is I fucking love this. wild. Yeah, this is so good. It's a fucking <laughs> I, I, uh, I benched my first 700, and then I pull 750, but I fall backwards with it. And I'm like, man, so I go up to 800. I go to pull it. I barely get it off the ground, and I reach out my oblique. I'm like, fuck it. I'm done. I'm done. Well, my ex goes, listen, I don't care if we fuck. If we go back, go to the hospital or not, after this, uh, you're gonna pull its weight, you know, weight regardless. And so what I what a du- solid girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> duct tape your ass, yeah. boy. So we duct tape it back up, and by the grace of God, I pull that 800. I don't know how because my shit hurt so bad. And then uh, <laughs> right after, I was sled dragging for like I don't know six months, you know, to to yeah. heal it. But yeah, that's what happened. The abdominal uh, pressure. I'm very, yeah. curious. I'm, 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 I'm very curious about this whole duct tape situation yeah. because obviously, you know, motherfuckers. Well, it, it, there are some soft ass yeah, motherfuckers well, out here in this world, boy. <laughs> here, here's my question because usually the person who wraps your knees, you have a very close relationship with them. Yeah, who, was, yeah. who was the duct tape guy? I was my own duct tape. Oh, so you, yeah. you did it yourself? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember I was duct taping my leg one time because I had a tweak hamstring, and we had guys from the Buffalo Bills that were in there training, yeah, you know, yeah. and he walks in and he goes, Dude, that's like the most hardcore thing I've ever seen. And I'm thinking, you play NFL, this is the most hardcore yeah. thing you've ever seen? Like, I didn't think nothing of it, you know. But I guess looking back on it, it was, you know, you did I what you had to do. I think duct tape must be, like, undervalued in our I sport. It is. Like, yeah. it is. I just had – maybe I should start duct taping shit more, honestly. Yeah. No, yeah. Facts, yeah. Keep you bro. together, man. Your shoulder or something like that? Yeah. This is it, fucking It keeps amazing. your car together and your body together. Yeah. Dude, you know? That's what David Goggins was doing. <laughs> yeah, it's he, true. He's he duct taping like, his he had, shins. He had broken legs and he was duct taping yeah. his ankles and shins. Yeah, that's a yeah. hardcore Every motherfucker, day. too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you true. think, like, when people were talking about, well, I don't know if I want to go to the gym today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, oh, Luke's duct taping his oblique together. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, you're hurt? So, you're yeah. hurt? Yeah. Get the what? fuck so out of here. whenever you got, like, you got hit and you can't walk, what were, like, your training partners saying? Like, what was the reaction in the gym? Like, how the fuck is this happening? They didn't say nothing. They don't say shit over there, bro. Not until afterwards. Like, I showed them my legs and they're like, I said, it looks like I got hit by a bat. And they're like, well, you got hit by a car. You know, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, no fuck one yeah. can one-up, I got hit by a car, then I squatted the next no. week. Like. But, I mean, like, also, you know, like, I never deterred from the gym. Like, when I started dialysis, I had, like, a port in my neck. And, like, I still was squatting and, and doing pull-ups and stuff, you know, like, um, you know. And I was still trying – I was still beating guys. Like, you know, like, uh, I, I still – even when I was on dialysis back in 2014, I took best lifter at a powerlifter meet. You know, mm. out of it wasn't like you know studs there, but it was like 35, 40 guys. You know, and, and on dialysis, I'm beating normal guys. You know, and so I, at, I thought that was pretty. cool. At that point, were you like talking a lot of shit to guys? No, no, I no? was, I was, <laughs> I was just trying to stay alive. You know, yeah, like yeah. that's all I cared about. Back, you know, right then, you yeah. know, and I thought that was going to be my last meet. You know, we're going to get to that part. I yeah. want to take you so. You're battling back and forth with Greg. You guys yeah. are making – the whole crew at that time is probably – let's think. Like, I saw the – so, first off, my first experience with Westside was actually when Louie benched 600 pounds. A lot of people oh, don't know this. Wow. But on his 50th birthday, I was a uh, 17 or 18-year-old kid. I did that meet. Wow. So, I was supposed to tell the story with Fahey, but I never got a chance to. Yeah. But I actually – I was trying to find myself because there is video when he jumps in the guy's arm. He's got the yeah. denim shirt. Yeah. So – I'm at that meet. It's my second meet ever, Luke. It's in the trailer park close. And I, and I was actually a member of that gym. That was a gym. It was called the Fitness Pavilion. And when I told Louie about it years later when I met him, he called it the uh, trailer, trailer Park, park Nationals. Nationals. Yep, Trailer Park so Nationals. That, so I did my second powerlifting meet. It was a bench-only meet or a push-pull. And if you look on the – I went just to make sure that my brain wasn't messed up. Number one that day is Louie Simmons. He benches 500, 600, 600. on his birthday. Number – 70 down the list. It's Corey Gregory, 250 pounds. <laughs> so I was confirming that I didn't make this up. Just yeah. to, but anyway, so when Louie rolls in, you got to figure this is, I didn't really read Powerlifting USA. I was just starting out. I had done one high school meet in that. All of these all of these OG dudes roll in. Louie's got his own bars. He's got a fucking these denim shirts. I've never seen any of this shit before. Yeah. Obviously, it looks like a fucking biker gang. I'm like, yeah, what yeah. the fuck is... I mean, I'm already in a trailer park doing a fucking <laughs> power lift. <laughs> right, so right. it's not that much of a stretch right, from where I grew right. up. But anyway, so it rolls in, and I'm like... 
I'm enamored with the intensity. Yeah. Out the gate, bro. Yeah. And then it was almost like I got reintroduced because I went bodybuilding. I even did some powerlifting meets, but I wasn't really reading about powerlifting. Yeah. About 2008, it was when that Flex Magazine article came out. Yeah. Where Louis, or uh, I remember Ramos was pulling in the front of the article and reading about Panora and you guys. And that's when I was like, oh, okay, this is the motherfuckers I saw 10 years ago. Yeah. Like I made the association. Yeah. And that's when I started basically being obsessed with the protocols and the intensity. And I thought to myself, like, I got to find a way to learn from these guys. Yeah. And the best way was obviously to come over with the supplements and offer and, and to help you guys. And then, but during that time, when I started coming up there, like around 2008, 2009, to me, that seemed like you guys were at, I mean, Chuck was kind of st- almost on the edge where Panora had kind of taken over at that, yeah. that point. But like, across the board the strength might have been at the all-time high yeah. right is that kind of what you look at that as like oh, almost yeah. that time frame because yeah. we did the arnold member in that 10 by 10 and you guys deadlifted like 800 pounds and it, we only had yeah. two 10 by 10s yeah. <laughs> yeah there was, was no small. room yeah, it, <laughs> it was, was small cra- as it was shit. crazy like all these people were like right from me yeah. to you and we're deadlifting <laughs> right in front of them there's like i was a like huge crowd you guys want to fucking like deadlift at my booth at the Arnold and they're like sure and they come and it's literally two card tables and we had a deadlift I, I remember I showed up late and Corey gave my shirt away <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, like, I probably had six t-shirts at the time <laughs> <laughs> but I just remember like the intensity and the strength across the board in the competition like maybe talk about like when it was exact at that point in time, when you yeah. guys went to meets, there was no one even close to you yeah. guys, right? Well, well, like, it was dominant. When I first got there, like all of us, there was probably 14 of us or so, we could all, we all had the potential to be a world record holder, yep. you know, at any time. You know, it's just it's just a matter of time where we had to put that meet together, you know? Like, yeah. It, it's crazy. Like there's, with that though, there's a lot of ego, you yeah. know, a lot of testosterone in there, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, your ego gets big as you get stronger and eventually you know it can't fit so many egos in the door and they end up you know yeah trickling out i mean it's just the talk way about how louie kind of managed that because you hear all these stories right and i know some and and talk to him about it here and there but it's like it was like he would put a ton of effort into you but if you didn't want to be there the door like it's almost like yeah. he cut did it was it just cut yeah. like it was like it was like hatchet man yeah. type but also like if you was in there, he would bend over backwards to help you. Yeah. He's bailing guys out of jail. Yeah. He's helping guys with stuff. Like, a yeah. lot of the stuff that he helped people with, people don't even know about. Yeah. So maybe you can shed some light on just maybe the scope of kind of Louie's personality. <laughs> hey, that's, a, that's a hard <laughs> that's one. That's a hard one, pretty, but give us a little. It's very complex, <laughs> yeah. that's for sure. I always say, you know, Louie plays chess, not checkers. You that's know, facts. Like, like, he's just an ultimate, uh, you know, mind you know, he can play these ultimate mind games, manipulator, whatever mm-hmm. you want to say. Like, he just knows how to, like, get you – get the most out of you, you know? Yeah. Like, but at the same token, like, he believed in me more than I believed in myself at the yep. time. You know, like, he believed I was going to be a world record holder. Like, yeah. he he instilled that. He was always, like, you know, talking about that, talking about that, talking mm-hmm. about that, you know, and, and saying the things, you know, to get you get you to want to be on that board and, sure. and all that stuff. Um, and, it, and, like, I just – you know, Louis just he's he's great, but like a lot of people didn't like Lou because and to be a fact, you know, you can't have thin skin and be around Lou. No. Lou <laughs> likes to talk shit. You know, he likes to get Because he's your, fucking competitive. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he loves it when people talk shit back with him, you know. Yeah. But at the same at the same time he's also like giving twenty dollars to homeless people. Every exactly. homeless person I see he's giving twenty dollars. That, that's the thing a lot of people miss about Louis. He was very giving because he made yeah. good money. Yeah. I mean he's he's yeah. monetized it because he loved it yeah. so much and did it for so long. Yeah. But he helped a lot of people out. Yeah. And people don't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, and you were expected to bring it. That was like what you paid back for the gym. You know, you mm. didn't pay gym dues. You paid with your intensity, yeah. paid with all, everything you had, you know. And, like, if you got up early enough, Lou paid for your breakfast. Yeah. And he tipped, like, $40. It was, you yeah. know, he was one of the most giving guys, you know, I've ever met. And, like, if you hit a PR or he hits a PR, that's, like, the best day ever. You know, like, yeah. he's – if you ever wanted to get something from me, like, if you needed some powerlifting gear or some protein <laughs> that's the supplement, day. that's the day. <laughs> you know, when, when you hit a PR or he hits a PR because he's, he's yeah. you know. The thing I loved uh, that I heard him talk about is that he felt like he was in between heaven and hell one yeah. time he said that because he couldn't compete against you guys anymore. Yeah. That yeah. he was in the environment he always yeah. wanted, but he had got too old yeah. and too banged up. Yeah. 
where he couldn't be. And as I've been banged up, uh, which I'm a lot younger than him, but the last couple of years, like yeah. it's frustrating yes, when it you're is. like, I've been trying all these years yeah. to get it in this building, to get here, and yeah. I can't fucking do what I want. Yeah. But then obviously you're you're coaching and helping the other guys, and you're seeing them reach crazy heights. Yeah. And a lot of times I didn't even run into some of these protocols, so I was like in my late 30s either. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's yeah. like then I see more of a finished product and what it's able to help do. It's a uh, it's a it's a hard one because you go back and forth because I get here every day trying to beat motherfuckers. I actually yeah. won the other day, but I think it's because Treadway <laughs> didn't show up and but yeah, I beat the other guy on a board press. But I was like, I fucking I don't give a fuck. There's three motherfuckers here. I won today. So, but I've been working for that for about four years, Luke. So <laughs> I mean, you know how it is. We gotta run a break. Oh, we gotta go break. All right, we'll we'll be right back. We got uh, Tyler Treadway for our commercial break. Oh. <laughs> The Round Table Podcast is brought to you by Max Over Muscle. With us is the Director of Sports Performance, Tyler Treadway. Mr. Treadway. I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but there's a lot of shady stuff going on in the sports industry. But don't worry, because Max Effort Muscle has you covered. This sticker right here, NSF Certified for Sport. We're making sure we got our athletes covered, no matter if you're in high school, professional, college. I had a college athlete call me yesterday, and he said, Coach, I'm really, really worried about the amino recovery because we have a drug test. And I said, look, man, a lot of these athletes don't understand what's in products, especially our products. But we're making sure that everything that we say is in here is actually in here. You can read the label. We have no uh, blends or anything like that. It's exactly what says it's in here. And there are no products in here that are going to make you fail a drug test. We got you covered. Max effort muscle, no matter your level of athlete. We have the supplements for you. Awesome. We're out. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mr. Troy. Back to the show. Back to the show. Man, some uh, epic shit so far. Yeah. Lots of not smallness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think just by listening to this episode, you're going to be tougher. One million percent. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Trey, yeah. man, a few words. Push, Trey's push locked a in. More. Oh, yeah. hey, so, all right, so you want to get, get to some total stuff? What are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, because you have five five pro totals. It's not yeah. just one, not just two, five. Yeah. So let's talk, let's just is that some? Is that what Louis did, too? Yeah. Because yeah, I, I knew that's where it came yeah, from originally, yeah. right? Yeah, there's only four people that have done it. Uh, Louis, Larry Pacifico, and Ed Cohn. And you. Only, and me, yeah. And Damn. those three are in the York Marble <laughs> Hall of Fame. I was going to say, is there like a Mount Rushmore somewhere? Because <laughs> yeah. that pretty much sounds yeah. right, Luke. That's it. Well, and yeah, and, and to, to have it, your name sit by those guys, holy yeah. shit, Luke. Yeah, yeah. And, and I did the last two after two kidney transplants, too. And so I, I'm no, the only one that's ever done that. I know. Yeah, that. oh, that's <laughs> fucking fact. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So that was something that was on your radar for a long time? Well, see – I wasn't able to give Louis a world record, mm. you know, and I, that's what I wanted to do. So I figured what's the best way to pay Louis back, like pay respect yeah. to him or how could I, you know, get my name something. Mm -hmm. And like, that was something that, you know, nobody's ever really done. And so I was like, well, I can do this for him. And yeah, so I yeah. got it in my head after my second transplant, like I'm going to stay at 220 and get a pro total. And I did, and then get Fuck my last yeah. one at 198. And I did that at APF Nationals. So went from know. 198 to heavyweight? No, uh, 308. 308. Yeah, so got I got it. one in 242, 75, 308, and then 220, and then 98. 98. Last. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's what was crazy. the total at 98? I know you at know 198, it. 198, it was uh, 1970. I weighed 196. Jesus. Holy <laughs> shit. <like> that. <laughs> Damn. So let's talk about training because, honestly, like, for a person to get to that elite of a level, yeah. it's it's – you can get there, but then it's usually they'll fall off. How did you like stick it? Long time. Like yeah. How you, did you last? You just long have to, to do that? live and breathe it. You know, you got to wake up every day. You know, you got two choices when you wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. You can either, and it's about your perceptive. You know, perception. You can either, you know, wake up and say, you know, this day is going to be shit, or mm -hmm. this day, you know, I can try and improve and be better. And every day I wanted to get better. You know, I was always hungry. You know, Louis was giving me a free membership to a gym buying me breakfast you know uh if i ever needed money you know i could go to him yep. if i if i did and and the, the uh, best coaching in the world and the best coaching in the world yeah <laughs> and the, the best Mecca. training partners yeah. in the yeah. world and, and people you know they want to think it's like rainbows and paradise there no it's hard work a lot of days i you know you dread going in there you know mm -hmm. but afterwards 
you know, it made you a better man because, mm. you know, the work was done yeah. and, you know, you feel better about yourself because you did it. And your guys, you, you didn't want to let your guys down. You yep. always wanted to show up Team. because you knew they were going to show up and give their all. And you didn't want to miss because you didn't want them to get stronger than you either. You know? Yeah. It was, it was, it was you know, that. And, and then you didn't want to miss anything because a lot of times we get, you know, like visitors, like, you know, famous, you yeah, know, yeah. fitness stars or whatever come in, you know, just, and you wouldn't know about it until you, until you got in there. And so you got to meet a lot of people too. So yeah. you just didn't want to miss, you know, and there was times I had to miss for doctor's appointments, stuff like that, but I hated it. You know, like I, I always felt like, you know, I, I, I need to get stronger, you know, and, and oh, yeah. that's the only way I can. You well, know? and the other thing is that in, in at our level too, even like we need the help. Yes. Like you need, you know, a lot of guys don't, aren't wearing gear here, but the reality is like the spots and the fucking, like, guys can get seriously fucking hurt yeah. when you start getting th- at these levels. We're taking all this, you know, fucking 500 pounds plus three, 400 pounds of bands and all this shit. Like, you know, I fucking fall out. Like, I had my suit messed up and almost yeah. fell out. Like, yeah. you know, guys don't realize, like, you need those fucking yeah. training partners yeah. because of the competition, because yeah. of the help, yeah. because of the accountability, yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. That's why I always thought about you, Luke, is you understood all of those aspects. Yeah. It, it didn't seem like you, because... What tells me that is you've been there that whole time. Right. You didn't have, like, where it was some blow-up thing, whatever. Like, it just yeah. seemed like you understood how great it was. Yeah. You wanted to be great. Yeah. And then that you cared about it at that level. Right. Even though we don't know each other super well, but that right. was always my perception of you right. because – mostly because you're still there. Yeah. So right. you – you and to me, you got it that whole time, and you still put up big numbers. Yeah. So to me, it was like you had bo- both worlds that yeah. you – understood what you were walking into and what you had access to a lot of guys can lose sight of that after a while because it's their norm well yeah like louis tells you exactly what you're going to get when you get there like people's they start getting world records their egos get big Mm -hmm. you know and then they forget about like the guys that helped you get there like anytime my training partner's got a world record i felt like that was part of mine too because without my push you know that's a real team exactly without without me being there you know you wouldn't have have done that and people forget like louis says he's going to give you so much money and this and that's it yeah you know after that you're just you're still just another lifter you know there's no nothing out there you might have control of the radio for a little while and that's pretty cool to have that yeah no that's a big deal I yeah (laughs) Yeah, that's that's pretty cool i had that for a couple months that was cool (laughs) that's funny because i remember uh i I asked tony about that one time like well What's the like ox situation? He's like the strongest guy in the gym. Yep. So what it runs yeah. the ox. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of happening with us right now too, in a way. Tyler yeah. Galbraith got the good playlist. I mean, he's the one who's been putting up some pretty crazy numbers. Yeah. And so I mean, I, I kind of outlaw country, but other than that, yeah. he pretty much <laughs> runs it. But that, I remember, uh, I think it was Ramos told me a story about how ch- you guys used to have a gang of CDs in there, and somebody yeah. was playing one that Chuck didn't like. And that fucking Chuck only liked this one CD. He threw the rest of them in the fucking parking oh, lot. That, <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's, I, it sounds I, about that right. Sounds now. like some Chuck. Would do, <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's that's definitely Chuck. Was the intensity that you saw from that those those older the guys that are just a little bit older than you? Was it like something you felt like you could match pretty or like it was that something like you were up for right out the gate, yeah. or was it something that like you saw it and were like, okay, this is what it's gonna take, so you just dial in? Like, I, I think yeah. a lot of people think they know what intense is but there's levels of it yeah. and this was obviously at the most extreme yeah. level yeah I, i've come to realize now that i'm older yeah like for to do what like we've done and whatnot you have to be a little fucked up but, oh yeah and, thousand yeah. percent and like like <laughs> my first memory of me of when i was a baby was my dad beat my mom and so Ooh. i was like two you know and i had dreams about it for like i don't know five years or so and like i always thought like that was normal, but that's not normal for a kid to have that. That's not yeah. a dream. You know, that really happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would just like put it subconsciously or whatever. <laughs> so like I was born into like a world of violence. So like, you know, uh, you have to have something, you know, in you like where you don't want to be a bully or you can fight bullies off or whatever, mm. you know, you, that drive you. And like Louis says, you got to be willing to die, you know, for this. And like, it's not some like, you know, paradise, like you've got to obsess about it, about being stronger and getting stronger, whatever sport you are. Yep. You know, if you're a fighter, that's, you got to live to fight, you know, yep. or, or if, you know, you're a lifter, you know, live to lift weights mm-hmm. and be as strong as you possibly can. Uh, eat like you can, not party all night long, you know, do the necessary things that you need to do, you know, drink enough water, you know, eat the right amount of food. You got to be a professional about it, basically. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I told him when we were walking through the gym, I said, what I love about our time at 4 a.m. is it weeds out the motherfuckers. Exactly. Yeah. That ain't serious. You find out who's really about it and who's not. When. Real fucking quick. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just what it is because yeah. you can't be half in a different life. In this life, you've got to be at bed on time. You can you can run it like, you know, low rest for a little while, but you're going to get yeah. hurt. Right. I exactly. mean, that's just what it is. Yeah. And so that's one thing that I liked about that call time is, you know, because your guys' was hard for a different reason. You really couldn't have a certain jobs when you're training because you guys used to train at eight, right? Yeah, you couldn't have a first shift job. Yeah. yeah so, so it was like, so that, that kind of well, made it a We had a lot different. of criminals there, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> <you know? laughs> so, this is true. Yeah, we had guys that were criminals. <laughs> Officers and guys that uh, were actually were not, in, yeah. yeah, that were actually in. So you know, it was one or the other. I was the corrections officer, so I, I wasn't one that was <laughs> disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 disclaimer. Yeah. So good. Was, um, there, was there any like cr- like crazy like fights or anything like that that you witnessed? Oh or? yeah, man. Like, uh, well, I'll I'll go back a little further. Before that, I was a youth leader. It's basically like a corrections officer for juvenile delinquents. Oh, yeah. And um, back back then, man, I had like TVs thrown at me. Like I had this kid, he's about 300 pounds, headbutt me in my face right before I did the Arnold. I okay. ended up spraining my thumb. And if you watch that video, I I open uh, my thumb opens up, and so I fingertip that that last that, dead that that, the 805 yeah. because uh, my finger was my thumb was sprained. Just to add to it, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. But I was like I was like, how the fuck am I gonna pull? But I had to do it, you know. Yeah. And everybody was there, and it was intense. And like, man, I gotta pull this, you He's know. Got some meat hooks. Yeah. So good. Dude. <laughs> yeah. uh, where was I at? Not, uh, right? It was fighting in yeah, West Side. Because I think oh, a lot yeah, of people yeah. think like, "Oh, these guys are fucking fist yeah. fighting in between such," which it does. Ha- it it, it happen. does. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. It does happen. Um, and then, like you know, uh, you know, sometimes money was thrown on the table. You know, and mm. but I mean, it was always it became a. It's like say you start out with speed benching or speed deadlifting or what or speed. Uh, well, deadlift and squat and whatever, you know, it would end up being a max almost every time yes. because somebody's ego, you yeah. know, everybody wanted to win. And that was that was what was great, man. It was always a contest. But on the downside, I think it hurt us at meets because we were going too hard, too yeah. long all the time. I think my CNS, like you watch some of my shot squats, I'm shaky because my CNS is completely fried. Like, because yeah. we use so much band tension. And you guys probably know, like, we, sometimes when you're driving, you get lost or your hands go numb or whatever. It's just <laughs> yeah. it's crazy, man. The uh, that that was the one thing I remember thinking like after I was there a little bit on Fridays, I was like, all right, I've been reading about these percentages for this dynamic day. This ain't even fucking close to what I've been reading <laughs> <laughs> because I just remember like Gritter fucking screaming at me and yeah. putting more weight on, and I'm like. Yeah, this is not 50% plus one band. I'm getting my fucking ass kicked, and I can barely get off this box, and this pretty much feels like a max effort. <laughs> Gritter taught me how to squat because I wasn't getting enough air, yeah. and so when I would take my stance out, motherfucker would hit me, <clears throat> like in my side, and I'd be like, this motherfucker, he's pissing me off, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm and gonna, he's I'm a hit little this old man, grouchy man. motherfucker, <laughs> yeah. bro. Knock this old man out. <laughs> But I ended up squatting a thousand. Went from nine thirty to a thousand. Yeah, and he was like eight hundred pound squatter too. Back yeah, he in the was day, strong. Right? Yeah, he, yeah, he was real jacked too. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, they, him and Bob Coe just did an episode with the Tommy, and it was oh, really? really good because yeah. Gritter really hadn't really been on camera at all, yeah. from what yeah. I gathered. And I remember like the first time I went there, he was like. Tim Harold took me on because Tim Harold lived right behind my gym. That's how I met him. Okay. So literally, like Tim Harold's like childhood house was like four houses from the original old school. Wow. So he would just walk over yeah. to do extra like extra workouts, and so that's originally how I got in. And then when he walked in, I was like, I mean, Tim Harold's a fucking monster. T- Tim blocked a lot of sun. That's yeah, sure. I mean, he's like <laughs> six eight yeah, four twenty huge, four man. fifty. He I, walks in, I'm like. Holy yeah. fuck! Like he's like, well, I want to walk on the treadmill. I'm like, dude, I don't even know if you can walk on my fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah. treadmill. <laughs> he, uh, his briefs when he left was still there, and Tim's like real Jack now, yeah. like bodybuilder Jack. But his briefs were so like his leg hole was like as big <laughs> as somebody's my waist. waist. Yeah, yeah, man, it was huge. He yeah, was I such t- a big. Told guy. these guys the first day I told him I go. I really want to learn West Side. I think this is when he was kind of taking a break. He was kind of going through some yeah. stuff. He wasn't going yeah. over as much. Him and Zach Cole both came yeah. to my gym, yeah. and. He's like, all right, let's do good mornings. I'm like, all right, cool. And then he does like fucking 700. Yeah. And I do like 185. <laughs> and I feel like I'm going to get fucking broken. And he's like, if you want to learn West Side, good mornings. I'll see you Monday. And I'm like, yeah. all right. So that was like my entry. And then is uh, I, I started going single ply, started working around a little bit. And he's like, you get up around 600. Maybe we'll still go, start going on Friday nights. And a couple of the guys, it was most of the Newark guys kind of yeah. ran over there on Friday nights. And that's when I go up there. And that's when I meet Gritter, and it's a blue band, and we're going on a low box, 
and I've never squatted even at that time at our gym. I think we had a mirror in front of the squat rack or so. Like we weren't together yeah, yet. Yeah. Yeah. I get up there, so I'm all fucking out of whack, Luke. Like yeah. I'm trying. And Tim looks at me. And he's like, "Please do not make me look like there's like I should not have brought you here, right?" right. Which I'm sure I have to. So I was in my mind. I was like, "Whatever this motherfucker asked me to do, I'm gonna fucking I'll break it yeah. if not." So I go plate 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 we go to four plates a blue band and i make it for one but gritter's making me hold it after every time i unrack it my fucking lower back's going like is he screaming at me that's the worst fucking squat i've ever seen in my life who the fuck has ever let you like just at me at me at me and so fucking i come in the next week and then i look over and he goes oh i figured i scared you away and I go, no, man, I'm trying. I want to fucking learn. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it fucking sucked. Yeah. But but I just was quitting being sore like a day before that. But then after that, he came when I squatted 700 at my gym wow. the first time because uh, I think Joe squatted that day too. So Louie was there. Gritter was there. And he was the first motherfucker smiling after I made 700. It was That's fucking awesome. unbelievable, bro. That's awesome. Yeah. Was that your first time using bands? Ever? That was the first time I had ever used bands set that's, up the right way. That's crazy. So I unracked the bar. And ours weren't hooked up. They weren't choked, right? Because you guys yeah. had them choked around that. Yeah. Well, first off, I didn't have a monolith either. Yeah. They were choked around those 45 or yeah, around those fucking four by fours. Yeah, four by fours. Yeah. And I, I unracked the bar. And the bar is 55. I was still using a regular bar. And I, I looked over at whoever I was with. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I knew. <laughs> it was like noticeably like 200 pounds heavier than yeah. what I was doing. Yeah. I knew I was fucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't. They don't understand how tight that band tension is. No! You see a lot of monoliths. They just have the yeah. band around the monoliths. Bro, and this is like we have stacks of forty fives to make it even stronger. Like it's yeah. it's strong. Fucking strong. And then you know about like our old safety squat bar. We yep. call it Old Bessie. Yeah, yeah. Was, that, that it'll build your squat, break your neck, and be, be, <laughs> fuck your bench up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds but, like a bad a bad stripper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like you'll say, guys will say they can safety squat like 700, and they'll come and try that bar, and they can get barely get like 450. You know, like that's that's a man maker for sure. What I really like, and when I got introduced to the Camber Bar, which Tim had brought one of the old ones over, and it's still here. He never came and got it, which is yeah. kind of nice. But hopefully, Tim, <laughs> shout out Tim, <laughs> he'll take my bar. But uh, that was the just the specialty bars. People don't even realize like that. This is a good spot. Like, explain why you guys use specialty bars, why people should use specialty bars. Because a lot of people who go to normal gyms, they don't even have access yeah. to them. But why Why should they, you know, seek to use them? Well, the, the biggest thing is it hits different angles of the muscles. Yep. And it, it keeps the body confused. And it keeps your mind, you know, strong. When you're doing the same workout all the time, yep. you get kind of, like, stagnant. You know, like, it's monotonous. Like, the Shiliko methods or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, that kind of training. You do the same, just percentages all the time. And it's the same lifts. Like, I couldn't do that. You know, like. That's why I like conjugate. Exactly. I got to do this. Cha- whatever I got this day, right. it's there. <laughs> right. Like, no two workouts are ever the same. Correct. You know, you can, you can change everything up. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I think that's it might be great. a personality thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of those guys, they, they, it's a lot of more of the nerd dudes that like those percentages yeah. and shit. And I'm like, yeah. bro, for me to think like I got to do 71 percent of this today. Yeah. How about it's on that mat? How much can I pull off of yeah. that fucking mat? And can right. I beat myself by five pounds than I right. did it six months ago? Right. It just made so much more sense yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because then you're constantly you're in better shape that way. When you yep. do percentages and stuff, you have to have like a 12 week block all the time. When you do conjugate, you can be after the 12 weeks, you can be in shape year round. Yeah, you could you compete, compete anytime. Anyway. Yeah. Anytime, yeah. And that's the one thing I like is our guys pretty much can drop at a hat and compete, and then you guys could do the same thing. Right. And that, that I think I, I like that because then it feels like you're always ready. Right. I mean, yeah, you could do your circumax and all that right. stuff, but well, like at, when I was at my height of strength, like I knew I could pull 800 any day. Of the week, you know, that's yeah. gotta be a good. That's a big dick energy feeling. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> eight hundred. I, 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 like I tell you, what, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, really is is when you're the last person to go on the deadlifts. Yeah, you know, at the meet. That's that's. Oh that's yeah, you're when, finishing you know, it. Yeah, when you're yeah. finishing it, and you know you're the last one, or the yeah. you know that that's cool. Never experienced that. <laughs> 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 so there was a. Uh, so I was. Uh, I had an injury. Well, first of all, I ri- I tore my supraspinatus off, like ruptured it. Wow. So I never got it fixed. I went and saw Matt. I went and saw Louis, uh, Serrano, like to you know say, hey, can I get back to competing or whatever? Yeah. And so I ended up benching 315 with no pain actually just a few weeks ago, which is really oh, cool. Yeah. And so now I'm getting back in a shirt and all that. But anyway. <laughs> So I had that problem that I had a back problem. So I didn't get to compete for a little while, but I got back in my squat suit and shit started feeling better. So I go down to the cell block meet or whatever, and I squat 680. I weighed like 215, so that wasn't Mm -hmm. like my best. But anyway, but as the meet was really long, 
It was I like might, 12 hours long. Yeah, it was really fucking yeah. long. And yeah, I only bench like 300. But anything at that point was good bench. Yeah. I, have, I have literally not one rotator cuff anymore. <laughs> I get to fucking deadlift 10 hours later. My deadlift in the gym still wasn't even back to a 500 pounds yet. Yeah. I mean, it was fucking super weak. I was, and I pull 405. I think it was the. It felt so fucking heavy, Luke. That then I go. The guys are looking at me, and I'm like, I think I'm gonna jump to 440. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in gear, so all the guys are pulling like 7, yeah. 800 pounds, yeah. and they have to deload the bar. This is probably one of my worst. From like 745 to 440 <laughs> so uh, i'm in oh, bear i mean i am fucking just demoralized at this point so i go i look at tyler galbraith who's probably gonna pull 700 soon raw yeah. he's super strong i go bro this sucks i'm about to they're about to say deload the four he goes i got you g so they go uh can we take the bar and he goes <laughs> let's go g <laughs> 440, like, as they say 440 he like it makes this loud noise it was so bad and that pull was really fucking hard but I w- but to just get through a meet yeah. that banged up, it was a huge win. Yeah. But it was so fucking frustrating, yeah. bro. And you've dealt with way harder shit than that. But it's like one of those things where I love it so much. I mean, I, I did my first competition when I was 17. Yeah. I'll be 44. I've competed every year, That's multiple amazing. times a year. So the longevity game is like people keep asking, like, why you keep coming back? I'm like, I cannot get enough of it. Yeah. I, I wish. I mean, sometimes I think like I should. Yeah. But I and I. So yeah, speak on that. Like you, I, you absolutely I, love it. I, yeah, I actually I, I was talking to my wife last night, and you know I've retired from competitive lifting, yeah. and I was like, you know, I think I could squat eight hundred, and so like the it <laughs> doesn't go away, st- does yeah, it, 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 it doesn't. Casual it's, conversation. It's, yeah. yeah, it's like it's like I I think I could still do it if I put like you know six weeks of good training in it. So I don't know if that it, I don't know yeah. if that's going to light something up or not, but I don't know. It, yeah, it it never dies. You know, you 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 try to have different outlets and stuff. And that's probably why like I'm on so many medications now for like bipolar and stuff, because I used to have that outlet, you know, of competing yeah. and all that. And then when I got taken away, just kind of the aggressiveness isn't with, yeah, there as much. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I was so focused on that, that like I was too tired for anything else, you know, to, to act crazy. Mm-hmm. So that kept me under control for a lot of years. Mm-hmm. And then when I, went away from that kind of you know went out of control the chaos bit. and intensity of lifting has definitely helped me be halfway sane yeah. i would agree with that 100 yeah. percent. i think yeah. if i didn't have that i who the fuck knows yeah. I, I would i would have definitely got myself in trouble oh yeah no I, question. I'd, I'd be dead or in prison now yeah. if i wouldn't have uh, found lifting weights that was my outlet i think sure. it saved a lot of guys oh it did it did like well and think about all the guys that stayed out of prison because of louis you know yeah. like <laughs> a lot of us were misfits you know we were yeah. all kind of like you know, we kind of had like daddy and mommy issues or whatever, you know, and and in a fucked up way. And, yeah, and yeah. you know, we came to Lou, and and in, in a way, he was kind of like a dad to he us, was. you know. And, and he's like uh, a father figure coach. I mean, yeah, that and, helped a ton of guys. I mean, he taught me to be a man, you know, more than my dad did, you yeah. know. And, and for everything he gave me, I'll always be you know forever grateful because it was just sure. so much. Like he was just such a, a good person to oh, me. Yeah. Like, you know? He really is like the fucking Iron Samurai, bro. Oh yeah. I was on uh, I was on a plane to Vegas. Not I don't think it was for the Olympia, but it was for something. Like that. I ran in the doors one time. Yeah. This is like early kind of when I met those guys. I'm like, where's Lou at? She looked at me like I was. She goes, What do you mean, where's Lou? He don't go on vacation. <laughs> I go. What do you mean he don't go on vacation? He goes, Corey, he don't leave the gym. Yeah. I was like, huh? He hates leaving Franklin County. <laughs> yeah. He hates, like, if he goes to a meet, people don't, like, think they're going to hang out with Lou afterwards. He's gone. After the after the he's meet, out. he's done. Last deadlift, he's done. You know, yeah. he, he might stick around for a few pictures, but he, he's not yeah. sticking around for tra- – he's gone. The other thing I'll say is, like, it didn't matter what level you're at. If you truly wanted to get better and get strong, he would talk to you. Oh, yeah. And that's what a lot of people – because people used to just call Westside and he yeah. would answer and talk to him for a fucking hour. Like, yeah. a lot of people don't realize how much time – over that block of time yeah. he spent he had no business helping me like I didn't belong even close yeah. to that place but yeah. he he knew that I really wanted to do it and then I just kept coming back for more yeah. and I, I was uh, looking at this old video like when that gritter came and I squatted that that was 2011 like, yeah. I just squatted 694 and a half this year at yeah. 181 at multiple weight classes lower like I've squatted 700 pounds for like a decade now yeah. you know what That's I mean awesome. like he, he could tell that I wanted he could, skinny Corey you want to squat at west side huh? I said, dude I want to fucking learn this stuff well, he loves he loves somebody with heart and an underdog story because he was an underdog himself you know exactly. he has like a fourth grade education even even though he's just like the smartest guy I've ever oh met oh my gosh yes. but yeah he, like he grew up, dropped out in the fourth grade or something like that and, That's and nuts. To, to be able to do what he's done is just is crazy you know he's just uh 
uh, it's wild. It, it, the legends don't die type of thing is oh, definitely yeah. ap- ap- yeah. applicable to Louis Simmons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So was it like? Uh, did it feel like having your dad pass away? Yeah. Is that really what it, it felt it, like? Yeah, Luke? it felt. Yeah, like uh, felt like someone just punched me in the gut. Like it was really hard. I couldn't really put it in my put it into words what my emotions were feeling. Yeah. You know, it's it was it was yeah it was hard. You it, feel like a guy like that like will, will, just won't die. Yeah, like, it, like it, he yeah. literally has I mean, that. He had a tattoo that said "Born 1947, died never." You know, it, <laughs> it, 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 he lived it lived that life. You know, I mean, like a lot of people. You know, we all die, but not everybody truly lives. Yeah. And like Louis was one. You know, he was living. You know, every day of his life, lived like a rock star. I fuck you know? with that. Yeah. yeah he. Did. Oh yeah, his car fetish. Like that's yeah. one thing I, I liked about Louis. <laughs> yeah, he's he always had a different cars fucking cars, and, yeah. man. He used to have race cars, all, everything, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, what's so? What's kind of next for you? Or l- let's go to the the health stuff because a lot of people hear you kind of reference it, but like talk about the kidney stuff, the transplant, like yeah. this because this has been going on for what eight or ten years? A little longer than that. Okay. Uh, so I was diagnosed before I ever got here when I was living in Indiana. Mm-hmm. I was diagnosed stage two uh, renal failure. Okay. And so by the time I got to Westside, I was probably stage two, stage three, probably the beginning stage of stage three. So I was able to do. All that stuff I did at Westside while still being in stage three kidney failure. Um, That's fucking crazy. So I always wonder, like, if I would have been, like, healthy, you know, I could have probably totaled 3,000 or, you know, and yeah. done something like that sure. along those lines, you know. But, you know, that, that's not what happened. That wasn't God's plan for me. This yeah. is this is what he has planned for me. So anyways, um, so I find out that I'm in stage three, and then about – I'm in Westside about three years or so. And I get, uh, I start holding a lot of fluid Mm -hmm. and, um, I can't control it. And I have a fever of like 104 and then I throw up like everything. Just out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Okay. Yeah. And so I, I thought, well, I had a little spot and I went to the gym and still squatted and everything. And that little spot like spread through my body was, and it's because I didn't have any white blood cells. And so I go into the hospital and I have a 104 temperature and I have it for like over 24 hours because the doctor forgot to give me aspirin. Mm. And uh, just a second. Yeah, you're good. And uh, so he forgets to give me aspirin. Finally, they get my aspirin, get my fever to calm down. Mm-hmm. Uh, the doctor says, do you want to speak to a chaplain or whatever, you know, because uh, they wanted to, like, read me my last rites. I'm like, what the fuck? They're like, you're about this, to fucking die. Yeah, I just want this affection taken care of. So I found out I was in stage five kidney failure. Um, the doctors Damn. wanted me to go on dialysis. I refused it. I ended up competing six weeks later. And I could tell, like, my strength, you know, I used to open on the squat 970. I was open at 870 and barely mm. got it, you know. And, like, uh, I pulled 750, and then I went to try to get on the board with 820, and, like, it, it was like they turned the gravity, you know, like my yeah. strength Somebody just wasn't stapled there. It. Yeah. <laughs> so then I end up um, having my first transplant, and I was worried about coming back and all that because – uh, at the post transplant office before I uh, had one, I saw these guys talking, and they like six months uh, post op, and they could barely pick up like some trees or some bags or something. Damn. And so, and they do, they cut your stomach. So I'm thinking like, man. So my conventional deadlift's gone. I can't conventional deadlift anymore because mm-hmm. I mean I can, but it's like super yeah. weak because of that. Um, but I could still sumo deadlift, and I was real proud in the meet that I did six months post op because I pulled 700 at 220. Um, weighing like 216 when guys were having trouble picking up you know True. other stuff so i was you know I, I was real i thought that was pretty cool having that much muscle and just being that in shape helps guys bounce back so yeah. much better than weak fucking normal people right, right? and that's what a lot of people don't realize right. about strength is well, that when you yeah. have that muscle that's your lifeline well when i got hit by a car i think yeah. that's what kept me alive For sure and sakari t- always told me the stronger you go into surgery the stronger you come Facts. out so i did that mm. and like i came out i was the first there was four of us that had the surgery that day and i was the only one walking the you know the first day and i just kept walking and faster I, more i walked you know faster i'd heal and like the doctor said you can lift 10 pounds Pounds, but he didn't say how much. So I went to the local YMCA, right across the street from West Side, yeah. you know, down the street, and I was taking ten pound stuff, and I was just doing like fifty reps and everything. These guys, probably, people walking in, probably like, man, this guy is super weak, but like, <laughs> I, I didn't give a fuck. I was doing, you know, I still, yeah. still, I still had something to do. So then um, I'm on. Uh, I, my kidney was good for like about three years, mm-hmm. about two and a half, and then I go through rejection, and then this rejection was bad. I put on like a hundred pounds of fluid, and uh, That's got to be like demoralizing too, oh my gosh. because you're just well, like Fuck. yeah. The the doctor comes in and he's like, well, I don't know really what's going on. I said, listen, I don't know what's going on either. But three days ago, I was 250 pounds with abs, and now I'm like 340, 
and it looks like I never worked out a day in my life. Literally that much. Yes, blood. yes. Like it, and it looked like I. It looked like fat too. Like yeah. it was all, and I was swollen everywhere, and like I couldn't lay on a bed. I'd have to sleep up because then the water. If Jeez. I did, water would come up this way, and like maybe oh a real bad moon gosh. face. And I feel like the Michelin man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then I I started dialysis, and that took. Uh, probably about a good three to four months to finally get all the weight off, and I ended up weighing like 220, and that's when I competed mm. um, and took best lifter while on dialysis. That was going to be my last meet um, because I didn't see a kidney coming in sight, and I knew like I couldn't, I couldn't physically. Was it the same one or the other? The it good, was, a, the it was good a, one. Meaning, uh, like the one that um, that was reject. It was a rejection. Was so it was the one you had got replaced. Replaced. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, my okay. my two in the back yeah. were already bad. Got yeah, it, got it. yeah. So this goes bad, and um, uh, I'm on dialysis. Take best lifter. So it's going to be my last meet um, because uh, I, you know, I didn't see a, a transplant in sight. <clears throat> so then I get get one. And I'm like, I don't think I'm ever going to compete again, but I start training. So then I start squatting. I, I, I come back super fast and so fast that I blow my shoulder completely off. I, I tore my uh, labrum, rotator cuff, and bicep tendon. So I'm still squat. I'm still doing everything. And that's the famous video we saw in the fucking uh, documentary the sling, yeah. where he's in the sling and he's yeah. fucking pumping shit. So, well, that, <laughs> that I, took, I took six months to get that shoulder uh, operate on because it was like I, I was thinking in my head like it's just in my head you know just whatever and then when I took a, like 365 out and I could barely hold it because yeah. my shoulder and I, I was benching you know I was benching more than that I was like oh shit man and and uh so I had that done and that took like 12 weeks to recover and the doctor said don't ever bench again I was already yeah. benching at that time <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah, yeah. Well, like, yeah. These are just guidelines yeah yeah, yeah. 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 so so then for I, normal I, humans yeah. <laughs> right I rehab myself and then that's when after two transplants and being on dialysis before I get my pro total at 220 and then I get one at 198. It was my last meet, Nationals 2018. And then this past past March 2019, I went back on dialysis. And now I do home dialysis. Um, so, like, I set the machine up and do all yeah. that. And then I stick myself. I do uh, two 14-gauge needles. One, one goes in, pulls the blood out, and spins it, cleans it. And then one pushes the other 14-gauge needle, pushes the blood back in. And I do that four times a week uh, for, like, over four hours a day. So four hours, you had to camp out four times yeah, a week. Yeah, man. It, it, and, the, and, like, I'm not a big TV watcher, you know, yeah. but as I pose, you're probably not either. But, nah. like. But you're forced wait, to at you, this point. You, you can't do nothing. Yeah, I can't move my arm or nothing. So it's like, you know, yeah. I, what can I do? And I'm right-handed, so, like, I can't really, like, write either. Yeah. And, like, texting's hard, you know, yeah. so I just I have to watch TV, man. And it's just the fucking challenge you're up against yeah. from now on, right. basically. Right, Luke? Right, well, I mean, hopefully, like, another kidney will mm -hmm. come, you know, yep. and, and – and, but then I think about it, you know, like, you know, everything happens, you know, it don't happen on your time. It happens God's timing. You know, yeah. I've, I've grown to find that, you know, like you can't be impatient because clearly God's been telling me something, you know, he's keeping me here, but Thanks. it's to do something else, you know, yeah. obviously. And I think now it's coaching because like yep. I was hesitant to get into coaching, but then once I started doing it, it was like, oh my gosh, like I love it. It's super rewarding. Right. Man. And then like the first meet I went to was with my client was like, this was the first, like my, it was almost like my first meet, yep. but it, through different eyes, you know, <laughs> yeah, and it's just, yeah. it was so, so rewarding cool. feeling. Like it's exhausting too, because it's like, you want it so bad for them yeah, and like almost like more than they do, but you know, as much, we'll say as much. You start to really understand, you know, how much Louie loved it, right? Mm -hmm. Seeing you guys do those things. Well, he got lucky too, because he was able to, he had a situation where he was able to get the best of the best. Yep. You know what I mean? Like that's hard to do, but. He, he did it by letting us train there for free, you know. Yeah. And, and so, so if you could you ever have that opportunity, that's, that's sweet, you know. Yeah. But I would love to be able to, to say, you know, I, I'm training, you know, world champions. And I, I actually I train a lady now. Her name's um, Gail, and she's a 66-year-old cancer survivor. So she knows, like, what it's like to, 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 to be told you're going to die or, or feel like you're going to yeah. die and then come back. And then she just um, – she squatted a 165, which was a five-pound all-time PR – um, before cancer so she her best squat wow. before cancer was 160 after cancer 165 and so like i just and, she, and you're she, beaming for a 160 yeah. pound squat that's yeah. what it's all about yeah, right man. there yeah so cool. yeah that's so cool well i got a chance to uh my son competed for the first time oh, wow. um at larry's place uh yeah. at, last year and he's he's a senior in high school now but he was a junior and that was probably one of the coolest things was you know, wrapping his knees for his third squat. So he weighs 148. Actually, yeah. Trey took his name off the board. So that was the thing is we didn't have a lot of guys at 148. Uh, definitely not as strong as Trey. Yeah. But uh, he's like 
So if I go, what? Do, how do I got to, he's like asking me questions like, I'm pretty sure I can beat that squat that's up there. It was like, uh, what was it, like 380, Trey, when you beat it? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty, because he can front squat like 315. He's real strong. Wow. And so I was like, but you got to do it at a meet. And so he's like, all right. He's like, let's go. So we go and he opens up, smokes like 365 or whatever. We, we go and we beat 380. And then the record in the RPS is 430. Yeah. So this was like one of the coolest things ever. He's like, Dad, I can squat more than 430. I go, I think you can too. I'm like, but we got to jump to 400 first. I'm not jumping you from 380 to 430. Now I like <laughs> right, that idea, right. but yeah. but I'm wrapping them and you know, and he's cool and calm and collected. I'm thinking, this is the wildest shit. And I was so proud of him, the way he handled himself. He pulled 400, wow. squatted. He did end up squatting 402, but they red light him. The guy tapped my leg, and I called him up, and then they said, then yeah. that guy hit the red light. I'm like, didn't you fucking tap my leg, motherfucker? Yeah. But it was like one of those situations. But whatever. But he goes 402, like 185. 402 wow. you know in high school at 148 That's i was awesome. fucking beaming man it yeah. was unbelievable that and then hopefully he'll do another meet and i can do it with him yeah. i didn't want the first meet to be that way yeah but i want to do some griffy griffy junior shit you oh, know yeah. what i mean like that's that's, that's, that's my plan that's so sweet. and yeah. then he knew trey just squatted what was it 452 yeah, he, squat, me, yeah. he squatted 452 at 148. Wow. Took him off pretty good, and he's going to squat 500 at the next meet. And so I was like, yeah, you probably ain't getting that back. I don't know. Like, you, you have to grow <laughs> up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> work, so, but that, but that being able to have somebody and coach him, especially when it was family, it was, you know, but I get the same way with these guys. Like, oh, yeah. I get super excited when when they get those goals, and I still want to fucking beat them every day. Yeah. But the reality is to see them progress is, yeah. is unbelievable. Well, you're more than – you're just a coach. You're, you're It's your family, you know. It like, is. Like, uh, you know, I always say the difference between a trainer and a coach, a trainer counts reps, a coach changes lives, you know. <sighs> and, and, and We need to cut true, that up yeah. for his IG. That's a good one, <laughs> everybody. <Yeah. laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. Because I – and see, that's the one thing about – our group too and i learned a lot from going to west side and seeing how like you did have some guys that were obviously a little dysfunctional and shit yeah and it was like the guys that when they're coming in i'm trying to get ahead of some of that stuff and on top of it you know no matter what their job is like saying like hey you ever thought about the investing thing you ever thought about meaning stocks like i'm trying to like we've been trying to like push towards the building their businesses and like i know louie help guys out all the time too but as these dudes are coming in young i'm trying to like get them no matter if they're a construction guy or they're doing something else like to say like hey if, do you have a financial planner do you need like i'm trying to push more of those things inside early yeah. so it's like maybe i can clip some of that stuff a little bit before yeah. it gets there you know what i mean yeah. and it was like that was the one thing that i know i know louis definitely had business stuff and guys would talk to him about it but i tried to like early in this group's kind of process try to really say like hey i've made good money and we're building a business you come in here in between sets if we are talking, I'm trying to tell you about the stock I'm buying. <laughs> and I don't care whether you got $20 yeah. or $200,000. It doesn't fucking matter. It's right. all relative. Right. But, like, trying to get that type of dialogue so we can have maybe a little less dysfunction <laughs> going on. <laughs> right. Everybody wants to talk about the hot chick they ran through or whatever. I get all that. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But I always say just leave it on your phone. Just don't send it to mine. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> don't clip that for Instagram. Good rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, all right, where do we go from there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot. Oh, <laughs> Luke, anything? Uh, so, you know, there's experienced lifters, beginner lifters, power lifters, non power lifters. Like, yeah. anything just like that you want to say to some of the listeners? Like, where can they yeah. find you? Advice about being in the sport? Anything? Um, man? Biggest thing, like, I've seen in the sport is mid back. A lot of people don't have a mid back. They Facts. fall over in squats and stuff yeah. like that. And their deadlifts round over. So, I would say, you know, work your big mat mid back and conditioning yep. you know a lot of people always seem after the bench like they're ready to go home and like i was at the time i was ready to start you know bar don't start till the door bar yeah. deadlift hits the floor whatever that is yeah you know that that's saying um yeah the guys that leave right after usually have a short window yeah yeah i mean you, I've you gotta that. do the auxiliary work to keep your body strong and then the you know sled drags and conditioning work um so i'm going to be doing a, a seminar next week in charlottesville virginia that's cool um, you and aj no just me, me for this yep. one yeah the instagram handle is uh, at the gym charlottesville and then with aj i'll be in texas and that one's juggernaut underscore fitness and uh that'll be august or september 10th that's cool. uh, by austin texas 
and then uh, getting out on the road yeah buddy yeah yeah seminars are fun a lot yeah. of fun um you just coach all day long well you know? yeah and you can see impact right in person right, right there that right. is cool um and then uh if you want to contact me my ig is uh luke edwards 5xs underscore pro Five, <laughs> <laughs> Five times underscore pro. And it should be. <laughs> All right, it's Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G at Small Arms. Danny at Trace. Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Great having you here, Luke. Yeah. Thank you. Thank we you. Out.